Hello and welcome. I'm Sherry. Thank you for being here. Um, and happy January. I hope you're enjoying the first few days of January, which for me, I love this time of year. I think after the busyness of December, where every, all aspects of your life seem to be, I don't know, more complicated, it's lovely to get into a, this sort of slow step and back in the rhythm of January. I know some people find January and February quite difficult months, and I understand that. And certainly last year for us was a very difficult January. But generally, if for me, it's about kind of renewing my focus because I think it's so easy in December when everything gets, you're out of your routine and routine is really important to me. So I like getting back into that and actually finding new routine, I think is lovely, new things to do and new focuses. And for me, my focus this year, both actually in work and personally, um, is very much nature. So I thought what might be a good thing to do would be to actually show you some of my nature journals so that you know um, what I'm talking about really. Although I've shown this before, I thought it might be nice to show you some of it in a little bit of detail so you could think how to get going. This is, uh, the backing here is calico. Um, this is quite a thick calico and I've have had it for ages. You could use, if you wanted to do something big, and this is, you'll be able to see, this is quite big. You could use, um, I've used an old tablecloth from Ikea before, sorry, a linen tablecloth that I bought from Ikea before, which means you get a lot of linen and a nice big area for not very much money. Um, you could use, if you wanted to, um, an old uh, sheet. You could use pillowcases if you wanted to go smaller. You could do smaller sections and put them together in a book. You could do them, you could make each one a cushion. You could do anything. You could do this on any scale you wanted to. I wanted to do something that kind of encompassed the whole year that I could stitch on. This is still not finished, actually, if I'm honest. I wanted to put some more things in here, which I still might. You don't need to think either when you're doing a nature journal that you have to start in January. You have to finish January before you move on to February. It's slow stitch, you do what you want, when you want. You can add things to it. So with this, for example, the focus for January was little Jenny Wren. This is, by the way, one of our, we have a little kit which we are trying to get back in the shop. I've had people asking, I just haven't had time to do it yet. We will be putting this as a kit back in the shop, but the PDF, um, which is an immediate download if you wanted to stitch Little Jenny Wren is available in the shop now. You would need to then just transfer it using a light box or a window onto a piece of fabric. And I have chose, I've got, you'll see as I go through this, I've sort of got this, this circles sort of all the way through. Um, but obviously you don't have to do that. You could also stitch it straight onto the fabric. There are no rules, just do what you want to do. If you decide to do this, which I would be very happy. So this is, so this was the focus really, little Jenny Wren. And then I've just added bits and pieces. So this is a little visit we made to Dawlish. This is when we went to Foey that, that um, in January. And then I've just embellished it, just little stitches here and little stitches here, a little Suffolk puff. And the other thing that I've done is trying to move it across so you can see it, is I've also got this thread kind of going all the way around, which is kind of connecting the months. It's given some detail to the piece, but also it kind of connects everything, um, which is just something that I wanted to do. Um, Fair Maids of February. I mean, the little snowdrops, which come out um, January, February time. And then I like to just add on little scraps of fabric. I love scraps of fabric. It's my thing. I just, my little, my stitching account is Selvage Chronicles. Um, I think it's Selvage Dot Chronicles. And it's actually, um, I 
you know, it's about the, the whole idea of Chronicles is about this, this kind of the story, the history you get from textiles, but also the selvage is some of my favourite. This is selvage here. It's some of my favourite bits of the fabric, are the, are the bit that you get on the end of the fabric, you know, the, the selvage, the edge. Um, but that's if you want to follow my stitching, that's on Selvage Chronicles. And then I just, with this one, this was another little, this was our blackbird that we have in the garden, which I've been watching Mr and Mrs Blackbird this morning. They've been eating the currants that I put out for them. Polka dot, because law. And then just Suffolk puffs, a bit of fabric that I've sort of manipulated and put on there. Another line drawing, uh, connecting February into March. Um, this was from a piece of fabric that I had that I cut out because seed heads probably my favorite thing Moving on. This is another little embroidery that I did. This is um, a little robin um, I love to put little quotes on it that this one here wandered lonely as a cloud um, I just think it kind of connects it then on to Little Trotty Wagtail, that's a poem, one of my favourite poems. Um, another bird that we have, no, I've not finished him, just realised I haven't got his feet on. Um, more Suffolk Puffs and Bluebells. So basically you're adding on whatever you want to, whatever you see. Don't worry if you're picking up a flower that actually maybe isn't even, even seasoned that month and you've just found it on the floor, a hydrangea head or something, just put it on, it doesn't matter. More Suffolk Puffs, a bit of ribbon, left over from something that I loved, couldn't throw it away. This was a pattern from one of our Nature Journal boxes last year, which we will, we're hoping to uh, release as a little PDF this year. Um, cow Parsley, my favourite thing. Um, another little quote where the cow parsley skirts the hedge, uh, hawthorn hedge. Um, Favourite bit of lace, another scrap. The line again, connecting. That's actually gone down a little bit to below. Um, we have a lot of swans on the river that we see um, when we go on our walks along the river. And it's lovely to see them and watch them growing. Another little quote, another scrap of favourite fabric. Applique is probably close and up equal with, uh, to embroidery or my, just my absolute favourite thing to do. I love it. This is one of my favourite bits of fabric ever. A bit of vintage fabric, that was a, kind of one of the last bits. This was on one of our Selvage Chronicles, um, I think this is our first Selvage Chronicles box. Um, foliage, another quote on there, little bits of, um, I think this was in the box, these were little bits of fabric that were in the box. Uh, another, this is grasses, I love grasses, absolutely love grasses. Um, you're getting the idea, it's just, it's basically little bird footsteps, eggs cut out of fabric. You, a nature journal stitched is just, the focus is kind of nature, but it's just, it's really about slow stitching. It's just about making little Suffolk puffs, putting on a little bit of ribbon, um, just enjoying yourself, just making marks. It's, I'd love you to do it. I'd love you to start if you don't, it doesn't have to be a big piece like this. It can be something really small, but once you start um, putting stitches and bits of fabric onto fabric, you'll, you'll love it. I'm sure you will love it. And it's so therapeutic and it's so good, good for the soul. So I wanted to show you that because when I talk about a Stitch Nature Journal, I think a lot of people are like, what, well, you know, what is she talking about? This is what I'm talking about. This takes up a lot of my, when I say takes up a lot of my time, it's what I do most evenings. I sit and stitch. I haven't finished it. I will show you the bottom half when it's completely finished because I didn't have a lot of time over Christmas to do as much as I wanted to and I've got quite a few gaps. But 
that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be finished. You know, before, yes, I've started a new one, but that's fine. So that's my nature journal that I wanted to show you. The little, this that I show you, showed you that came from our first Selvage Chronicles. We do a little box. Uh, we try and put one out once a month. The one currently in the shop is called Selvage Chronicles Arts and Crafts. I think my plan is to write something on there, which is why that's there. Um, yes, and what you get is you get a little box of, um, you, you normally get a little pattern like this for you to stitch. Um, sometimes this is our hand dyed thread, sometimes you get a bit of thread. Uh, you'll get bits and pieces to get you going. You'll get a box of some new fabrics, some vintage fabrics, um, sometimes a bit of ribbon, just to get you started. So if you're interested in that, I think the Arts and Crafts one is going to be in the shop for a little bit longer. Um, and then we'll be moving on to our next one. But just, also I like the way you can just add on. The great thing about this is, you can also cover up something. I haven't actually there, but you can. Um, don't worry what the back looks like. That's the back. My plans for this actually, when I do finish it and I'm completed and I think that's, that's it, I'm not putting anything else on it. I'm going to kind of do like a quilt sandwich, edge it and put some sort of um, loops on here so it can be hung up. And actually already this year, I'm looking back and this is reminding, we had a difficult January last year. We lost our, we just lost Archie um, over Christmas. And then we lost our little, our little cat. And we went away, remember this, this kind of brings all that back, but it also brings back that um, nature healed us. It did us good, so much good in that January. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely Nate. Uh, and alongside that, we are keeping a written diary which I will show you in a second. The other thing I wanted to show you is um, when I talk about slow stitching, this is a little pouch that I have been showing on Patreon and I am just in the process of making it up. As you can see, it's not finished. Um, part two of that will go up on Patreon as I finish it. But basically, um, piecing together all the fabrics on a background and embellishing it with lots and lots of stitches. Um, that's my other favourite, favourite thing to do. I, oh, this, so a little pile of fabric like this genuinely is more exciting to me than anything else. I like yarn, like a, like a bundle of yarn. I just love it. It just makes me happy. So I've made the, I've made it together. I will um, show you my next one as, um, as I make it and if you are on Patreon I'll be showing you me making it from the beginning. Basically these are the kind of scraps that I use. Uh, these are, this is a bit of Liberty which I absolutely love. These are the kind of things that you might get in Selvage. Um, little scrap, this is um, a bit of uh, avocado dyed, sometimes you get a bit of thread um, and little bits like this that you can add to it. Um, oh, these are some embroideries that I want to do. Polka dot goes in everywhere, but basically these are the little slow stitch pieces. When I talk about doing a slow stitch piece, this is what I'm talking about. So that's my slow stitching and I will show you that kind of through the year as I make different things with it. The other thing that we're doing this year as well is uh, keeping a nature journal. So I keep a nature journal generally, although it can be sporadic. And this year I'm determined to, to stick to it more fixedly and also Chris is uh, doing it with me. Chris is my son, if you've not watched this before. Um, you'll find him on Instagram at The Untrodden Ways. And he, he, we work together. So everything that we do that you see in Sherry Iris is, is both of us. It's not just got my name, but it's very much both of us. And we're both keeping a nature diary this year, which uh, a nature journal. So I'm calling my, as I've just said, I'm calling my stitch journal, my country diary, but we're, but we're both keeping a nature journal. 
So this is my nature journal written. Um, sorry, this, my stitched piece is very much my, I'm going to call it my country diary. Um, so I don't completely befuddle myself. So really, so for example, this is a piece of, I think it's bracken fern that we picked up on one of our walks and it is just laying matted now. And this was up to, must have been up to my shoulders. And it's a whole little ecosystem going on in there. It was fascinating. And I'm also interested, by the way, the whole thing with a nature journal is you, it's you just asking why. And I've noticed these are, whereas a leaf will curl upwards, these all curl down. And I sort of wonder why, is it to protect the spores? I don't know. Anyway, picked that up. I just think that's so beautiful. I would actually love to stitch that too. So I came home and I did a little uh, sketch of it um, and I've just written a matted brittle tangle of ferns, how long before we see the first, before we see the first fronds. Um, this I think is going to be more of a perpetual nature diary which is what, there's a lovely lovely talented lady that uh, she does regular live videos actually I think on a Monday called and her name is Lara Cole Gastinger. Um, I've been watching what she's been doing for a long time in admiration. She's an incredibly talented artist. And actually on that note, talking about being incredibly talented, I think the whole thing about drawing, it's exactly the same with stitching, is actually it's just about practice, practice, practice. The more times that you sketch something or draw something or stitch something, then basically the better you will become. Um, the first time you'll think that's rubbish, it doesn't matter. A nature journal is not about being a brilliant artist, it's about noting things down that you will see. Um, I've left space around here because I think I'm going to, so this is January the 1st of 7th, this page is 8 to the 14th and I think I'm going to do it as a perpetual. I've done it on washi tape so that I can take it off and change my mind so that I then come back to this week next year, and this was what Laura uh, Gastinger started, and then you fill in and you think, oh, that was last year, this is this year. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I haven't had time to fill in this week, but for example, this week, when we went on one of our morning walks, there was a, a bird song. We've got blue tits and great tits in the garden. And actually I thought, I think that's a great tit. I'm not 100% sure. So there's a great app called, completely gone out of my mind. I'll put it on the screen. Um, genuinely can't remember what it's called. Is it Merlin? Anyway, it's a bird app. Basically it recognizes a bird song. You, you, you play it on your phone and it will immediately tell you what that bird is. So that's a great way of identifying a bird because if you see a bird, rather than having to look it up, if it's, if it's singing, then you've got your bird ID straight away. And um, we stopped and listened and said, yes, it is a great tip actually. And as we were standing looking, trying to find it, we could see these squirrels playing as well. And things like that, you don't stop. You can so easily miss those things. So anyway, that's the beginning of my, um, Nature, di nature Journal this year. That's so delicate and brittle. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, actually. I might try and find somewhere lovely to put that. Um, we got, we both got one of these each. This is Stillman and Burn, and this is the Zeta series. This is like A4 size. You can get them in all different sizes, and you absolutely don't need this one. You can use just whatever you've got. But this one takes, if you want to do watercolour or inks, uh, mixed media really, that's why we got this one. And this is Christopher's, which he won't mind me showing you, I'm sure. And he's doing his more as a, just a, a, rather than a perpetual, I think that was his plan, but I think actually he's going to end up filling this. And these are little daffodil shoots that he drew coming through. Um, and he's written here actually, like the skins of leeks or spring onions as they start to come through. And then he's drawn a beech leaf. This is from a beech hedge. 
Um, and he was noticing as, as well the, well, the the beech leaves curl up at this time of year, cradling the waiting buds. And this wren, oh, look at this. I love this, it is so beautiful. I think that needs to be another pattern. I mean, that would take some stitching, but I think that needs to be a pattern. Um, so that's the way Christopher's taking his, doing his. He's also a photographer, so he tends to take a lot of um, photos as well and I know that he wants to display them as little Polaroids I don't think he's going to do it in here I think that's going to be a separate book but that's um, I thought I'd give you a glimpse of our nature journals that the beginning of them for this year so that's nature journaling I'd love for you to join in because it's just it just connects you with outside and makes you look at things differently and I think to it's, even if you do look at things outside, I think it's easy to forget. So I think that's what that's all about. So we've also got our first new colourways of 2024, um, which are a couple of people have, met, have said on Instagram they're moody. They are quite moody. They're also about, I think very often January is seen as the blue month. You know, people talk about the January blues and it seem, it, it, it's got this cold feel to it. And we wanted to kind of change that up and see January as, as more moody and having a depth to it. So these are some of our new colourways that we've got coming into the shop uh, today. So I wanted to show you some of the things that we've been working on uh, so far this year. A lot of it actually has been inspired by this fabric, which I love. Um, we've actually called, there's a range of things which I'll show you in a second. I've actually called this Twisting Here and There, which is from a poem by Andrew Young. And the poem's actually about swallows, but it's just about the movement of birds and, and the, the way that they, we see them and we think we know them and we don't, they kind of have this other life when they're flying up high and I, I could go on about this for a long time. This is the first one and we've called it Singing at Dawn. Um, these are all quite moody, they're quite cheery, they're quite vibrant and that's kind of juxtaposition to how January is often seen about being, um, you know, the cold, bleaker months. So we've, we've decided to completely change that. And this is called um, Singing at Dawn and the quote is taken from um, a poem by Ralph Waldo Emerson and it's actually talking about um, how you can take a bird song and try and bring it home. He talks about bringing a nest home, but unless it's a bird, unless it's sung in its natural environment, it's not the same, it's lovely. So this is called Singing at Dawn, um, Inky Blues and Dark Lavenders. This one is called Higher Still and Higher, which was another bird poem, this one by uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley. And this one has got, again, inky blues, some powder blues, some rose pinks, and they're kind of both olive and moss greens in this one. And this one is above a steeple. This is actually William Cowper, really great poem by William Cowper, quite humorous. And this one, again, has got a lot, they all sort of share the same color palette. This one has got not quite such dark blues, more of a, um, mid mid blues um, and some really dark lavender in there and some more greens and little touches of brown that you can see in there and they kind of all i think although they're different because they all share the same palette i think they all go really nicely together now last year towards the end we did a a lot of boxes which were which proved to be very popular and we got as many out there as we could. I can't, we can't do any more of those boxes because they all had bags and box pouches and everything else in there. And I cannot tell you how many bags and box pouches I made at the end of last year and I don't have the fabric, but we have dyed up just a few more. This was part of the elegance box and it was um, inspired by some Liberty lawn fabric, which is called Kira. So actually, rather than calling it the, that was the elegance box, but because we have a 
um, floral edit bouquet called Elegance. I didn't want to confuse you, so I've actually called this one Kira, but this is the one that was in the, the Elegance uh, box inspired by Liberty. And actually goes really nice with this one, I think. This one's got the green, they all go nicely together actually. So that is Kira and complete contrast to that one. This was another box that we did. Again, I can't, we can't do the whole box again because um, there was just so much in it, but this does come with Little Progress Keeper. And this was our country house um, sock set with two 20 gram minis. So that we've put a few of those in the shop as well. So all of these have, are available for you to have a look at in the shop now. Um, and I will just show you the wren. So the wren is actually very much the focus for us um, at the beginning of the year. And you're going to see that sort of translated into um, our patterns and our boxes that we do and our yarn, etc. It's kind of filtering in. Um, and at the same time, we're educating ourselves more about the wren, which is such an incredible little bird. If you have ordered our Wren Amongst the Snowdrops box, this will sit nicely with it. It's nothing, it won't muddy the waters at all. It, this is not anything like, it will, it will work well with it, but it, it was, it's not the same as what's in the box at all. Our Wren Amongst the Snowdrops is a box that is designed to inspire your nature journaling and your slow stitching, as well as your knitting. Uh, that's in the shop it will be in the shop for a little bit longer but we have already started putting those together so there is a limited number of those but this will sit with it okay and this is wren and this is on our sock base this is on double knit and this is 100 percent highland wool uh, non super wash zebra and you can see how they take your take the colors differently um, I've actually snapped one of these to make some socks so you can do socks on this on a very tight gauge um, it would also make a lovely cow but so this is wren and if you are into wrens we have like I say we have our wren among the snowdrops we have uh, the wren pattern we have a little wren notebook as well also, speaking of which, we have the Floral Edit, talking about Rangamon Snowdrops, our Floral Edit Minis Club, which is the only club that we're actually intending or with, that we think we're going to run this year, um, is Snowdrops and Hellebores, and that is in the shop. And again, that is shipping fairly soon. So, And I'll just quickly show you the bags. So these are the bags, and these are twisting here and there. It's got a lovely paisley lining drawstring, uh, little hand sewn tabs, box bottom that will take um, a couple of skeins. So any night, any smaller project, sock project, cowl, anything like that. Um, we've also made a box pouch, which these have been, these were very popular last year. You can use this for a small project, like a small sock project could be in there or some mittens. Um, you could have it on your bedside for your bits and pieces, on your desk, um, and that's in the same fabrics, so twisting here and there, that's the box pouch. And um, we've also made a few uh, DPN cosies, and these are for if you've got, if you're knitting something on a double pointed needles, if you pop it in there and do it up, it keeps it safe. Little lavender bags. This actually is the very last of the lavender, that lovely gainer, who is Tales from Cuckoo Land gave me, so that's got the uh, gainer's lavender in it. So that's what's um, gone in the shop. We hope you love it and that you like our take on January. So just wanted to share with you some of the reading that I'm doing at the moment, because that's one of my other focuses is reading. I don't give myself enough time for reading and um, I love it. So I thought I'd show you some of the books that I got at Christmas and some of these rules are older books that I'm just getting around to reading. Setting time aside for reading is a must for me this year. I've actually had this book for a while now from Field and Forest by Anna Koska. 
an artist year in paint and pen. Oh, and I'm absolutely adoring it. It's, I love it, love it, love it. She is um, Grim Koska on Instagram. And it is just a lovely little book. She has another one, which is, I think it's from Coast to Cove. That's going on my next wish list. And that's what I'm currently reading at the moment. This one here, which was all these, the rest of these books were on my um, wish list for Christmas. A Wood of One's Own by Ruth Pavey. I hope that's right, Pavey. Um, which is where she buys a piece of woodland. And that is going to be magical. And this one here, again, this is on my list, Nature's Temples, A Natural History of Old Growth Forests. Um, I think I can hear my willow boo pup having a little cry for me in the hallway. Um, this is going to be a treasure of a book. And this is basically, Maloof eloquently urges us to cherish the wildness of what little old growth woodlands we have left. Not only are they home to the richest diversity of creatures, but they work hard for humans too. <gasps> Oh, so that's my little pile of gorgeousness, which makes me very happy. Um, do let me know what you're reading because I love to. I love to get new recommendations. My book list for Christmas was huge. I've got lots more, which I'll show you some more next time. I also wanted to show you this I did last night. My little pup Willow Boo. Um, oh, I've just found another one. She. Um, She put rips in my clothes when she was a little pup and I've been doing lots and lots of visible mending, which I've been absolutely loving. I've been doing that too. Anyway, thank you for um, listening to me sharing. So thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the first little pod of 2024. Um, next week I'll go into kind of what my plans are, what I'm going to be making. Um, if you're one of our lovely patrons, you've heard me have a little waffle about that already. But I've got lots of things I want to do this year um, and I'm going to kind of do them in a cycle so that I have time for all of them. But I'll talk about that next week. Um, in the meantime, have a lovely week. Happy knitting, stitching, painting, journaling, whatever it is that you do that makes you happy. Um, and I'll see you next week.